bring it right around, I think one of the final things we would go, this is it, was like the special edition Street Fighter 4. So okay, I got the headband, but I mean, then this movie, which kind of fills in some things, but not a lot of things, and the dubbing is very bad. It's weird that that Street Fighter 4, I remember that like looking at like, it sounds so odd to say it, but I remember that I was like, I've always felt like kind of like one of my like worst video game purchases. And I don't mean that like in like the worst way, because it is still a like fun game and so on. But I just remember that was like the first time getting a fighting game and just kind of realizing it's like, oh, you know, just got kind of a, a basic setup and they're just going to keep continuously releasing things more, which I didn't think that was going to keep happening at this point. I'm like, I thought it was going to be DLC and so on. And yeah, and you get like the headband, which is probably the coolest part of it all. It's the headband, the $2 but at the same headband. Time, I, I got such mixed reactions or much mixed feelings about the headband because, you know, it says Street Fighter 4, so you know it's official. But at the same time, Ryu's headband doesn't say Street Fighter 4. It's just a red headband. But at the same time, how do people know unless it says Street Fighter 4? So it's yeah, just, this, it's it just leaves headband. me with mixed... You never know. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it just leaves you with mixed, uh, mixed emotions on it. But yeah, I, I always thought that was kind of a... Interesting one. Then there's, a, of course, that Street Fighter movie that's, you know, there. I, one Not of these days, great. I feel like I want to revisit that just for the heck of it, really, at the end of the day. <laughs> Nothing more than that. But uh, that, that's one of those ones where it's like, here's a movie. You could only watch it on your Xbox 360. Oh, yeah, it's got dubbing on it. Um, but uh, we, we did it last weekend. So uh, <laughs> it, it's close. Doesn't really match. Pretty much, yeah, they do the whole thing. Well, it's like even like Zone of the Enders too, because like we got actually well animated, and like we got well animated anime scenes in this for the cutscenes. Like, oh, cool! And then you watch it, and they're just doing like it's a bad kung fu movie. Like it's usually Japan Japanese animation is usually better about that, but this one was like the thing like they're talking when their mouths aren't even moving or just flapping. Just like, all right, that, that's pretty noticeable. Don't don't give me this shit. Oh, it's a video game, so it's harder to do. Fuck off. Yeah, well, it's like come on, it's like. You, you got an intern who can come in there and just line that audio up properly. You know what I mean? I mean, it's work. I'm not saying it's not work, but it's definitely one of those ones, like, you could literally get anybody to come in and do that. that that's not, like, one of those jobs that requires, like, years upon years. Shit, you could pull some kid off, like, the street, and you could be like, yo, here, you want to line some audio up? We'll pay you 15 bucks an hour. Hell, if you're in China, we'll give you five. You're not far off right there. That pretty much sums it up. But, but I guess, uh, well, I guess delayed reaction on the introduction there. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. Yeah, and I'm Spencer Scott Holmes, and welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. The ultimate podcast that you should be at. I know that's not our slogan, but I thought I'd just try to make something up on the fly. Try and make something new, you know, it's like super turbo ultra edition since we got all this Street Fighter shit going on. I know, and uh, we decided, we're like, you know what? Let's go back in time with a retrospect, a comic book retrospect on the Street Fighter Volume 1 from Udon, that comic series in 2003. And I thought about it when I was reading it. I was like, wait a second, you know what this book is? This book signifies something more than just being a Street Fighter book. This is literally like how me and you pretty much like met. Is like, we were in multimedia and it was like, hey, you like movies? I like movies. Oh, you like Street Fighter? I like Street Fighter. And you passed me like, here, have you read these you know, Street Fighter mangas? I'm like, no, I haven't. Have you seen Street Fighter V? And you're like, no, I haven't. Pass this, you know, whole set over. And then, like, Yeah, Street changed. Fighter did kind of bring us together. <laughs> yeah, between this book and Street Fighter V, it's odd. I'm like, that, that comes together is what Old Man mm. Orange is. 2V? Yeah, Street Fighter 2V. Did I say 5? My bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, it, man. it wasn't There's that There's a V in there, so Roman I, numeral 5. Yeah, it's confusing. But, um, yeah, Street Fighter 2V, the animated series. Mm-hmm. And I think one is, I don't know, I'll, I'll just say this right off the bat. Mm-hmm. This is one of those things where it's like, uh, well, to give you an idea of, like, how long ago this is, the version I have, because this was an, I was, I didn't go to the store looking for this. This is back when, uh, well, first off, I was just at a store. I'll say what store it was in a minute. But I was just at a store, and then, sure enough, just looking at the magazine rack, I'm like, what the fuck? A Street Fighter 
manga, but it's actually an American comic. It just has just does a lot of Japanese properties and does an anime kind of style. Well, you know what's also but the like, other oh weird thing God. I want to say about that, though, is if you look in the credits, mm-hmm. like, more than half of the guys are Chinese games. guys. So it's like a Chinese Street Fighter comic, so it makes it sound like it's a knockoff when you say it like that, but... But you got a lot of, like, I'm looking at the thing for line art. You, it's I think it's, maybe it's a thing where it's like, uh, maybe I'm wrong here, but maybe it's like... Amer- like American-born Asian people, because I'm Alvin Lee, Arnold Sang, Longvo, Noi, Rob Ross. <laughs> that's a, you know the that, famous that's, Chinese uh, that's, name of Rob Ross. I just was greeting down Alan Tam, Andrew Howe. So, uh, just Rob Ross, you got that. Um, um, and then you do have some, what, um, like, there is a handful what, what, of like, guest American guys in there, too. What's that joke from... Uh, um um oh, fuck what's that joke from undercover brother oh the um oh shit i know what you're talking about the one where um it's the actual well there's an it's actual thing affir- uh, like, like the, the affirmative action where, like when undercover brother affirmative comes down action. and he's like what's the white guy neil patrick harris doing working here and the guy the black guy the colonel guys just looks he goes damn affirmative action <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Rob Ross, here's the case of this. <laughs> well, but yeah, there's, there's also looking... the guy Ray, um, who um, he does all like the little teeny like Street Fighter kind of like funny comics in between each issue, and he's the guy mm-hmm. who did that cool book Sunset Bakery and a bunch of other neat things. I've always just like he's one of those guys. If I see him like on anything, I just buy it. I'm like, whatever it is, it's gonna be interesting. That's all I know. I have to. I think I've seen some of his stuff in the other uh, mini comics. So what this is, this one just is just the main straightforward story. It's it's very sm- short too. I think it's maybe the first. Uh, it's like the first couple of issues, the first six issues, including issue zero, which is a mini one, and they go by pretty quickly. But the artwork is so do- well done, and it's so well colored. It's just it's some of the best artwork I've seen in a comic book. Oh well, yeah. And I mean, it does have like sixteen people that, fucking drawing on it, so you. <laughs> It literally, I've never seen it. Just very book. high production. This is like. Oh, I was just going to say, it's like, I don't think I've ahead. ever seen any other comic book that has this many people on like one like issue almost. So I think that's why it has like amazing artwork. Cause it's like, they, they're almost like treating it like it's an animated movie or something. Well, yeah, I mean, well, just the production of it. I mean, a lot of Marvel and DC books don't look like they have this much coloring and this much detail in it, you know? Exactly. I mean, like everything in there is just on point. It looks awesome. The coloring's amazing. The shading's fantastic. The inking, like everything about it is 100%. It's one of those comic books that when you read it, it doesn't make you want to make comic books. You're like, oh, that looks like a lot of work. <laughs> I'll never be able to be at that level. Yeah, you know, it, it's... The old Eeyore kind of like, what's the point? You'll never be as good as Street Fighter by you, Don. <laughs> Pretty much. Might as and well just go, go find on. a bucket to die in. Maybe a noose. Get someone to help me with it. <laughs> no, um... Until I strangle myself with my own fucking tail. <laughs> no, um... Well, here's the thing. So I didn't, I didn't finish the thing, though. Uh, the store I was at, because the version I have, it's not just any version. It is the Blockbuster exclusive special edition. <laughs> Do you remember what was special in the Blockbuster one that wasn't in something else, maybe? If I had to guess, because I remember seeing this in stores, and, um... I the, the the on stores the the cover was I want to say it was Cammy and Chun Li, where at Blockbuster it was Ryu and Bison. So and the I want to see the Cammy I want to say the the one in stores like and like if you say you went to I don't know like Borders or the, another thing of the past <laughs> Borders or Barnes and Noble it would have like it was like kind of thing more of a green color this one's more blue so hmm. I think that's the only thing Blockbuster had some kind of line deal with uh i guess capcom when the anniversary collection came out where there's this period in 2005 or 2006 when they just had this big surge of street fighter mania happening again people getting amped up because it's the anniversary edition 
I think they put out... I think they're trying to make Street Fighter a thing again. Aside from the Anniversary Edition, because I think they by that point they announced Street Fighter 4, and they also, by that point, they had to be working on Legend of Chun-Li, or at least starting to pitch it, you know? Well, yeah, because that was kind of in the development, and that's when you, there's a bunch of like amazing Street Fighter merchandise. Like There was sick action figures all the time. They started making those really cool controllers, like the Sega Saturn ones that you could either get for PS2 or Xbox, and then PS3 and Xbox 360 as time went on that had like the cool artwork on it and everything like that, and there was all kinds kinds of variations of them you know they brought street fighter 2 back funny to, like, enough DVD. i went there to get and funny if i went there to get yeah because that's another thing the street fighter anniversary edition street fighter 2 the movie came out where it has the fist punching in it's all like 3d and all that <laughs> yeah that just came out too so it was like this big resurgence of street fighter anniversary shit and another thing about that um i actually went to blockbuster to get one of those special like artwork um, one of those cool artwork uh, controllers. I was getting the Akuma one. And while I was there, I saw this thing. I was like, what the fuck? And I flipped through it. And I was surprised. See, this is like, you know... I'm going to say this. This is probably the best version of Street Fighter. Any narrative version of Street Fighter I've ever seen or read. Yeah, this one is definitely... like I think what makes it so magical, too, is it literally just takes all the elements of Street Fighter. And it doesn't matter what it is. Like, Street Fighter 1, 2, 3... You know, Alpha takes all the games. It mixes in things from, like, the movie. It mixes in things from, like, um, Street Fighter V series. And just says, like, let's take all the best stuff and put it together and make one, like, cohesive story. Well, even Street Fighter 2 V, which that might be an interesting retrospect at some point. That thing is not perfect. I love it. But it's... you can see... It, it, it's, it's fun. It's not perfect. I gotta watch it again. I think I have more appreciation for it now, but... I feel like it's one of those things they're still trying to figure it out. They still didn't entirely have the character. They, maybe they themselves may didn't know who the characters were entirely by that point, or it was somebody else was working on it. By the time this came out, you already had the Street Fighter Alpha games, you which added a lot more to the story. You had a lot more, uh, you know, Street Fighter Third Strike and whatnot. Yeah, no, no, and no. plus very various animes to go off of no that's definitely true because that has you know there's so much more stuff then where v's coming right off of street fighter 2 but v's just one of those ones to me that that anime is just so special just growing up watching that back in the day when you know animes were so hard to find and when discovering that one and then getting the set and i've watched it so many times that i've i think i watched it like a couple years ago again and it held up to me just as good as always like i love that show so much i probably would even say that it's right after cowboy bebop Street Fighter V is probably my next favorite anime. I gotta watch it again, maybe. Except for maybe the thing with with me is I kind of got I started watching the show after I was really already in the Street Fighter. So to me, it felt kind of like ah, oh, there's still. It didn't feel like the full Street Fighter. You know what I mean? It didn't feel like Street Fighter Two, the movie. It didn't feel like the comic, which I read first and then going over to Two <clears throat> V. So yeah, it's probably they didn't like, have I want an Avion though. It could have could they could have had more I want yeah. to get an Avion. Throw me an Avion. That saying was so famous. We like threw that in some of our kung fu like home videos that we made back in the day. It was like you gotta t toss an Avion across the way like Ken. <laughs> so he takes a sip, spits it out. This is fucking Dasani. <laughs> Throws it down. I don't want this Coca Cola shit. <laughs> I want the real shit. But um. But no, like, going back and reading the Street Fighter comic, it's like, this is one of those ones that just stands the test of time as just, like, the solid, like, it's almost like a perfect gateway comic, I feel. I feel if you had a friend who, like, you know that they like Street Fighter or something like that, but maybe they were kind of, like, on edge about comics, this is the book you could hand them, and it'd be like, you know, they would be sold by this. And if they weren't sold by this, they probably just won't be in the comics. <laughs> That's just kind of how it is. Well, it does, it has great usage of all these different characters. And plus, guess what? If your favorite character, say say if you're one of the five people who your favorite character is Birdie, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't, if you feel like Birdie doesn't get a moment in this, he comes back in the series later. Like all these characters, because I guess that's the thing about the sh about a movie or a show. It's like, oh well, there's that character for a moment, and I think that most people by this point, I mean, you might want to see more of your favorite character, but like, oh, at least they're there for a minute, but. Something like this, they get to come back. You know what I mean? Like, okay, if we don't, because eventually this leads to uh, another series, and they have all the a bunch of characters they fight from Alpha, but it ultimately comes down to them just focusing in on the Street Fighter Two original characters. 
So, but starting here, it is kind of like Alpha, where it is this big mishmash of classic characters that you think of, along with Birdie, along with Charlie, along with Sakura. Yeah, so it's like, that's what's kind of the neat thing is, is just mix it all together, you know what I mean? And kind of gives you like, okay, there was like a Street Fighter 1 period, because there's flashbacks and so on to like Ryu fighting Sagat and everything like that. But as it keeps going on, it just kind of combines them all together and makes it kind of a little bit more cohesive. Because I always felt like the weird thing about the games, it's like, you got Street Fighter 1, then you got 2, and then when it gets to Alpha, they're like, well, it's kind of like... It's in between, like, one and two, some weird way like that. Kind of like a remake of one, but kind of its own thing, too. It's like, well, that's confusing. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the thing about Alpha is each Alpha game, they never thought they were going to make a sequel. So every time you played as Charlie, well, first off, it would suck to play that that pl that far ahead and just get to beat this game as Charlie and then see him get mowed down by a helicopter, which happens in this book. <laughs> yeah. And then to realize that, like, what the fuck? I did all that just to get killed by a helicopter? Wait, he's in the next one? We don't talk about this? Because every alpha game, they're like, oh, we won't make another one. This was just for fun, you know? But uh, moving from this, I guess the way you'd go about the, the Street Fighter series itself is if there were two main characters, I mean, I want to say first and foremost, main characters Ryu. Yeah. I'm going to say the other main character is Chun-Li. Now, when this first book starts off, it seems like it's Guile, but I'm going to say it's mostly Chun-Li because the way it works is Ryu and Ken. Ken is Ryu's supporting character. Chun-Li and Guile. Guile is more or less Chun-Li's supporting character, but they all have a moment. Yeah, that's definitely true, too. Well, because at first it just starts off like Ryu's training and he's kind of remembering his past and so on. He discovers that Master Goken is pretty much dead. He's like, oh, fuck, I got to go tell Ken. <laughs> so he somehow, some, I don't know how he really gets to America somehow. He finds his way. I don't know, swims? <laughs> no, but, <laughs> Gives well, some road head. That, yeah, you know, you got to do what you got to do. I mean, he probably, he, shit, well, I don't know. See, Ryu's like, he, probably did. he could fight that guy, but he's a nice enough guy that he goes along with the road rules. He's a man of honor. He is. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, but like, I just imagine him just out in like some dumb little raft going at where it all of a sudden he just thump, he stands thumbs up this big like, this big like cargo ship comes by. Uh, uh. <laughs> just hitchhikes to San Francisco. And I love how like, <laughs> rules of the road apply out here too, boy. <laughs> the rules of the sea road that is. <laughs> Something we actually forgot to mention because he's out there training and he has this whole monologue by Goken playing over. Now, here's the thing. This is actually one of the times you say, oh, we get to watch Ryu fight evil Ryu. So it's kind of cool saying, all right, you know, because you assume evil Ryu is just this thing that switches in, like, when Ryu's mad. But, like, okay, cool. This is pretty early on. He's battling evil Ryu. So... Yeah, you realize that evil Ryu's kind of been there, and that's almost like who... Ryu's fighting this, like, he's like, you know, I want to be a nice guy, but this evil side of me just keeps popping out. The Dark Hado. Which I can't help it. Well, I'll say this does take different things from various... It's kind of weird, because I want to say... I don't remember what it was exactly, but Goken, who's his master, there was originally some kind of mistranslation. Like, I want to say at one time, Akuma was called Goken or Gokin or something, and there was a mistranslation when they brought it over here, and I want to say that it became... Because in the Alpha movie, his name is Gotetsu. But they took that character design, Gotetsu, which as far as I know was a character who you never saw before, and then threw him, made him basically Gokin in this, which I thought was kind of interesting. The Alpha movie, which isn't really that great in, high, in retrospect, has like, oh, wow, they use that character design. And now he's a prominent character in Street Fighter. He's in like all the games now. Like, oh, here's Ryu and Ken's master. Yeah, because I want to say the first game he appeared in was actually the Alpha 3 for PSP version. Alpha 3, Goken? In the PSP version. Wasn't he Wasn't he one of the secret characters in that, like, very last version of the game? Maybe he was. I don't remember. I know that they had the girl from, um... The guy, I mean, well, the girl from, um... Mako or Makoto? Streets of, or... Yeah, well, not Makoto. Uh, it's the girl from Streets of Fury. You mean, uh, not Streets... You mean Final Fight? It's Final Fight, yeah. Final Fight, yeah. Because I remember, because it's like, I didn't have that PSP version, but I know you had it. And it had, like, three other characters that weren't in, like, the Dreamcast and PlayStation and so It had Eagle. It had 
the red, the girl in red, and maybe Gokin was. I don't think he was. I think Street Fighter Four was his introduction. Maybe for some reason I thought it was that one, but that that might be what it is. But um, but yeah, it is kind of interesting. It comes from the Alpha movies, where that real like design you get from him, and kind of how you know like that's what he looks like. Cause there, I mean, he, I want to say he's in the Street Fighter Two, the animated movie, but they they call him a different name than I want to say. He's just off screen. He's like, "Are you Ken? We're playing grab ass. Go get some fucking water." <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. One day I will die. <laughs> Yes, master. Oh, okay. Shut the fuck up. Go already. <laughs> I know it's we've been out here for six years with three dudes, but it is, it's not a reason to grab your friend's ass. <laughs> Ask first. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to teach you the ways to be a nice boy, too, Ryu. Get rid of that dark side that you got. You gotta stop aggressively playing grab ass. You gotta ask him first, all right? Just don't go in. Yeah, it's like, I'm sorry. That's the dark. I know it's the dark hado. That's what you keep saying. But and if I catch you boys swimming naked in the pond again, <laughs> like you did in Street Fighter V, I'm not as open minded as you may think, all right? I'm an old man living in the fucking woods. Yeah, you know. Human I mean? interaction is very minimal. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I'm just afraid of what my ways might turn if I see the the body of a naked young boy. The only the closest person I the the person I was closest to was my brother, who is now a homicidal half demon. So yeah. what can you do? And just you know, like Master Roshi, when you're an old man training kung fu, you're just kind of preferred. It doesn't matter who. <laughs> <laughs> So, moving forward. Lo and behold, Ryu comes back home. Master? Ma oh, fuck. What happened? And he's all like, he's like, go, like uh, Akuma's sign is painted above him. Like, just so they fucking know who he's like. He tagged it like it was fucking graffiti. Like, yeah, exactly. So they know who was fucking here. Which, Didn't this is one of those ones. Radio thing. I'll, I'll say, if you really never had any idea of the Street Fighter story, it, this would be kind of interesting. Because you'd be like, who is it? I mean, granted, most people, I think, go into here like, oh, that's Akuma. I know that already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But looking at him, like, man, that's a lot of bloody pain with the... Imagining maybe he just lifted him up, like, just scra like slowly, like, dragged him across one way. Like, all right, all right. Dragged him back down. So I don't think there's that much blood in the hu human body right there. Well, Gokin is pretty big, though. I don't know. He's a big guy, yeah. Maybe he just kind of, like, ringed him out like a rag or something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But then it cuts. Just done that. It, the next it cuts to like Guile, you know, in San Francisco. And he's like, oh, Charlie disappeared two weeks ago. I don't know how to cope with this anymore. Life's just not the same without my man. The man that taught me everything how to be, you know. And then we see that Charlie lost to uh, just this random cut of just Charlie losing to um, Bison and his main uh, three henchmen. So, and then moving forward, like Vega, Sagat, and Balrog. And then moving forward, it's ca it's that whole thing of like Ryu and Ken. Like he comes up to uh, Ken's house in San Francisco, this giant mansion, and it has that whole thing they always do in anime. It's like it's been a long time, and he just attacks him. Like, hey, bro, what's up? Where I'm just waiting for the time where someone does that and they get socked in the face. Like, bro, what the fuck? Like, dude, we used to train all the time. Like that was like five years ago. I was I was coming to say hi. Why the punch? Why the fuck you punch me in the eye? I'm expecting that to happen in one of these animes. <laughs> that almost reminds me like almost like that's like if if Sam Fisher and like Splinter Cell was like an anime and he went back home to meet like his training partner or whatever who's been like retired for ten years and he comes sneaking in the back fucking comes down from the rafters and grabs him from the neck <laughs> like uh, like dude what the fuck oh I, I thought that was like a training exercise like we always used to do. <laughs> or he comes in, just like steps in, like there's a gun pointing to his head, like you're getting sloppy, old man. Like, dude, what the fuck are you doing pointing that gun at me? I, I was, we were just having fun. It's fun pointing a fucking loaded weapon at your friend. Well, it's, it's how we train. Like, the war is over, asshole. That's my fucking house. You come sneak into my house, the fucking loaded gun. Like, I, my kids are fucking here. What the hell? <laughs> oh, don't worry. I already, I already trained them. <laughs> oh, kids, huh? That's what those were. Just like three black bags, like in the trash. <laughs> oh, uh, and you don't want to check on your dog either. I, I ran out of tranquilizer darts by that point. <laughs> it was a big fucking dog. It was a German Shepherd. What was I supposed to do? Yeah. If it was a Pomeranian, I could have just thrown like a fucking laundry basket over it, but you know. 
<laughs> I also love how, like, pretty much how, like, Ryu finds Ken's house is he just gets this, like, photo sent from Ken. Which is like, hey, Ryu, check out my house. Look at new chick. <laughs> I think that was, oh, that's right. Yeah, he's doing the selfie thing. Well, it's also, it's before time war. Selfies are a major thing, so he's doing like it's a Polaroid he sent him. Yeah. <laughs> my woman in my house. Last good. I don't know. It's like like Ken's like one of those few guys who could just be this like rich kid or like pretty much rich guys like kid, and like for the most part, like in, in real life, you hate those kind of people. But I don't know what it is. Like Ken's the guy who makes that feel like okay. I don't know. Maybe it's because he kind of seems to be still kind of humble. <laughs> I mean, to some extent. He's well, he's not like left and right, but. He's he's rich as fuck, but at the exact same time, he's this guy who's more about... He doesn't really care about all the money. It's like he just might use that to his advantage to go somewhere. But it's more one of those things, like, he just likes fighting. That's more of... That's the, the Street Fighter 2 movie got that across, too. Yeah, that, like that's really what it's about. It's like the fighting. And it's just like the money's just there to kind of help out. But what he really wants... It's almost like he wants that sort of hobo adventure that Ryu has. And he almost... he. I always got this sense that he always kind of envied Ryu because he's able just to travel around. But since, you know, because Ryu has just lived in a fucking shack <laughs> with nothing but a gi and like a, like a stick of bendel for years. <laughs> so it's this whole thing of him trying. It's just what he eats, what he used. It's what he's used to. But like since uh, Ken comes from a rich family, he kind of envy. I always got the vibe. He envies that and he wants to be that. But at the exact same time, he's like, I don't. I just can't. I can't. I'm stra I'm I'm shackled to this, but man, it'd be I, fun just to go traveling. He's like, I still gotta run the family business. It's almost that kind of like the Ken and Ryu lifestyle is almost like, do you wanna like work really hard in life and have to take care of so much and have big, you know, goals and money and all kinds of things which just lead to more and more things you need to take care of? Or would you rather just be Ryu and have absolutely nothing and wander the earth? Yeah, I think that's what ultimately it comes down to. So, um, it's one of those things I, I, you know, I envy Ryu more, but at the exact same time, because, you know, Ken, you, <laughs> Ken is the setup for everything you'd think you'd hate. Yeah. But then he just, he's just a likable guy. Yeah, he's just Plus, a... maybe because he has, maybe because he can kick your ass. So it's like, all right, well, you know, he could, at least he could show up for it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't know what it is. It's like, Ken's always been my favorite Street Fighter character. And just something about it. It's like, in any other situation, I just feel like that character wouldn't be like that. I don't know why. I just started thinking about this, though. <laughs> it's almost like the Haji and Johnny Quest relationship, sort of. It's like, oh, I like this guy. You know, I, I found him on the street. My dad said I could bring him home. He's cool. It's like I got my own friend well, now. It's kind of like if they focused on Haji instead of Johnny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it was all about Haji Quest. <laughs> Look, motherfucker, I'm the one with the real world experience. He's just like playing it like on his flute. <laughs> you saw it from a fucking jet, bitch. I was on ground zero. I watched all eight of my siblings die. <laughs> oh. Well, Race Bannon cooked you eggs for breakfast. <laughs> Fuck you, you, Johnny. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, hi, I didn't know you felt like that. Well, maybe if you asked, you would have found out, huh? How about that? Maybe I liked living in a diaper. How do you know? <laughs> Put clothes on me like some kind of American? I didn't even ask to get on the jet. You pulled me on. Yeah, I was making great money, like, trading snakes and shit. And then, next thing you know, you're thrown to a fucking adventure. Your adventure. Your quest. <laughs> yeah, the Johnny quest. No one ever wants Haji quest. I don't know. Haji is pretty cool, though. I mean, as, as a kid, I felt like maybe it's like, I can't be Johnny Quest, but maybe I could be Haji. <laughs> some rich kid. You can get adopted by another boy. <laughs> <laughs> to some, maybe it's that same thing, too. It's like, you kind of feel like, you know what? Well, I was going to say, I was like, like I, I can't be Kim, but maybe I can well, be like, Ryu. I was like, like, well, wait a second. That's like pushing it too far. <laughs> I know I can't be Ryu. Go so you got to find a rich friend. So you got to like go to Cisco. Like, Cisco, adopt me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be your Haji. That's practically what I was like as a kid at like Cisco's house. I was like the Haji kid. I just went along for adventures. <laughs> right, kids, to the Escalade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, 
But um, back to Street Fighter. So and through, back to Street Fighter quest. A few punches are thrown. A few punches are thrown. He's like, "Yo, okay, I love random fights as much as the next guy, but our master was just killed." And like, Light's like, "Oh my god, what the fuck? Oh, it's crazy!" And then like, Ken's like, "Hey man, that sucks, but hey, still good to see you. Let's go get you all settled in." And then we cut back to Guile and. That's where he says, uh, you know, he's trying to figure out how Shadow Law is involved with uh, Charlie's disappearance. And he thinks Ryu might be involved because Shadow Law is interested in Ryu. And then he finds out through um, American Customs that Ryu is now in America. So he's like, oh, shit. All right. He's, he's in San Francisco. He's right in town. I'm in San Francisco. Shit. How about that? <laughs> so they're going to Chinatown. And this is just them just sitting there bullshitting. Trying like Ryu just giving exposition, and that's when Birdie comes in, and Ryu is about to go in and just fight all these thugs, and uh, you know including Birdie. But th this is where it feels like something out of like a nineteen seventies kung fu movie. We're just like, <laughs> hey, you're not paying your, you, you, like just the whole thing of just like some yeah. poorly dubbed thugs coming in, like you're not paying the toll. Like oh, I already paid them. You're paying us now. I don't care what you say. Yeah, Big Tony downtown says he needs the money. And then he's big. He has a lot to eat. <laughs> yeah. He's eat a lot. And then he goes in. He punches out the most stereotypical, most stereotypical Chinese dude in this fucking, in this fucking book. Like, I'm talking full on, <laughs> closed eyes, big buck teeth. Like, I'm surprised they're in there. Part of me is thinking, like, well, the, look at all the names in the back of the book. Unless that's the one guy, Rob Ross drew. <laughs> so... <laughs> He's like, well, shit, this looks like all the people I'm working with. <laughs> <laughs> like, Rob, like, what? We, we, we give you one character to draw. This is what you do? <laughs> exactly. Puts that in there and so on. But then, whatever, that guy just gets knocked out by Birdie, just, like, bitch slapped across the face. <laughs> well, it's like, I mean, I look at this character. The only th thing I hear is... The 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 the, 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 the shitty walk guy from South Park. <laughs> You're like, oh, we already paid up here. What are you doing? You're like, that's not what I said. I smell the MSG in here. I'm Birdie. Yeah, like he just just the way they drew this guy. Like I'm surprised about that. But anyway, it's 2003. Whatever, just... It was like the last time you could get get away with this kind of stuff. Yeah, well, it's not me saying. For shame on you, Udon. Because, you know, I mean, you got a character like Chung Li in here, and then you got Gen, and then you got y uh, Yang and Yoon in later issues, and those. So, you know, I'm just surprised they drew this guy. Maybe it's just, it's whatever. But anyway, um, so I'm, I'm not mad about it. I'm just surprised <laughs> well, they Well, there flack. is that black guy, too, who gets taken out by Chun Li over here, and look at that guy's face. <laughs> when he's peeking around the corner, so it's essentially like, what's up happening. Yeah, that's another rough one, but it's, yeah. So, so first, so, you know, like, that's when Guile busts in and says, like, look, guys, I don't give a shit who you think you are. Get the fuck out of here. I don't care if you think you work for Shadow Law. And that's when everyone's leaving. And right as he's leaving, that's where he sees Ryu. And he's like, oh, the fuck? And then you even see Eliza recognize Guile, which will come back later. And Birdie comes down and attacks, and that's when Guile just gets into this quick fight. So it's okay. Birdie got a moment to do some action. Yeah, exactly. That's, this was kind of nice. He's there for, you know, a good amount of time at least to get something across. Boom, as the rest of the guys are trying to escape, Chun-Li blocks the exit. You realize that she's looking for Shadow Lu too. Boom, that's the end of that first issue. And then they go into, like, mm -hmm. they always have kind of, like, a cool little flashback. So you get to see almost, like, the end of Street Fighter 1, in a sense, where Ryu's fighting Guile, like, in the Street Fighter tournament. Or not Guile, I mean, uh, Sagat. Mm -hmm. Just had Guile in the brain. <laughs> yeah. It, well, then they, they have the thing, they have this thing where Chun Li, where the Cami, is watching, and from there he's like he, more Bison being aha, it's Ryu Ryu, like he's very obsessed with this dude for some reason, and uh, out of that you see Guile and Cami exchange not Guile Cami, Guile and Chun Li explain sto uh, exchange stories saying why they're both interested, which is kind of rehashing from Street Fighter Two the movie. Yeah, because it kind of introduces it sort of like that sort of way, too, and where Chun-Li's like, oh, my father was killed by, you know, Shadow Lu and so on. That's why I'm out here. And like, oh, God, I was like, huh, I'm chasing down Shadow Lu too. Let's get together and do it together. Why not? That sounds right. And I kind of, 
Oh, go ahead. It's just like that kind of like, you want to get this guy? I want to get this guy. We both work for an agency. Why the hell not? I want to skull fuck his corpse. You want to skull fuck his corpse? No, I just want to find my father. Oh, okay. oh you'll get, get, give it time. It'll come around. You, you, you know, I mean, you'll want to after a while. Especially, okay, maybe he killed the father thing. Wait till he kills your best friend. You know, the man that you love more than anybody else, but not in a gay way. America's. <laughs> Shoot, when you're in the Air Force together, you're flying high. You know, your hand on the joystick. Sometimes it's his joystick, but it ain't gay. Just keep that in mind. She's just like, you may be high in the sky, but it's out of God's eye. <laughs> it's out of God's eye by that point. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you've been there, right? No, 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 I haven't. Oh, okay, well. By this point, we are literally up in heaven. <laughs> All right, so should I should I meet you tomorrow? <laughs> Where do you want to meet at? <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you know that feeling when you know when I'm up there and you're locked on to a MIG and you're taking that turn. Next thing you know, you hear your buddy's hands come across the seat, giving you a little shoulder massage, telling you it's okay, pull the trigger, it'll feel great. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll just meet you at the Starbucks She's on 25th like, tomorrow. She's like, you know what, how about you take your own cab? Um, <laughs> well, when we get information, we'll get back together and kind of sort things out. That's where you just like, Kyle's just, by this point, I've been registering what she's saying, he just looks up to the sky, just looks to the moon, like... <laughs> Charlie! There's like a shooting star that flies across it. <laughs> well, the per- so, moving forward. Moving forward, we're back at like Ken's house or so and like that, and Ryu's having a dream of like when like Goken had a battle of Kuma and he was a boy watching, watching onwards and watching how uh, Goken's brother just left and said, fuck this place. You guys are stupid. You don't want to kill anybody. I don't want to be around here anymore. Sucks. Pretty much, and he's just like, I want the boy. Why? I want to teach him how to kill. Like, well, I mean, there's more to fighting than killing. No, it's not. You're stupid. If you don't fucking kill, yeah. He does come across as very, I mean, in this scene, does come across, I mean, he's always meant to be, like, like, Akuma's not a deep character, and he doesn't have to be a deep character. He's a fucking murder machine, and that's all I really want him to be. But since you see him kind of weakened and kind of a little, like, uh, Earlier on, he does come across like, I'll show you all one day. Fuck you guys. Yeah, I'm gonna go trade off in the woods to get, you know, alone. The best place. Where you guys don't exist. You guys suck. Kuma. I'm gonna, gonna ho- go hot doken a whole deer for dinner. <laughs> That's like the best part in that movie. I love that when he just shoots a hot at the deer. <laughs> yeah. That movie, like, I, I there's the fan movie that was became the official... Like, you know, Street Fighter 2 mini not Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Origin miniseries thing. Like, the only thing about that is it could have just been shorter. Like, I think it would have been better if it's a good hour and a half movie, not this two hour and 40 minute yeah. like, thing. Well, because it's just, there's, there's not a whole lot that happens. I mean, it's good for what it is, but like, yeah, it literally could have about an hour cut out of it. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. It's, it's not one of those movies that's better So then by Ryu wakes up, like, yep. Oh, yeah, Ryu's like, yeah, I, I had this, you know... What? Yeah, Ryu wakes up, has a dream, and so on, and then they're just, you know, hanging out at Ken's place. I can't remember what... And then it's one of those things, they're just sitting, like... They're having... They're, he's sitting there in, in, like, Ken's kitchen, across from Ken and Eliza, and it's... You, I'm assuming it's late at night, but I can only imagine, just, like... You just can't... Like, Ryu just goes to their door, just... He just hears... There's a knock at the door. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Yay, Ryu, what's going on? I'm just, I'm tired in here. Just like, he just comes and I had a bad the dream. The bed. Fuck. <laughs> Ken's like, I just looked at me, he's like, I had a bad dream, guys. Can we talk? I had a dream about Master again. Like, God, Ken, go talk to him. But I'm just about to go fucking talk to him, Ken. Like, Ken's like, fuck. I can do both. I can All right, Bob, I'll be right out. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like a dad coming to this, like, hey, buddy, what's going on? <laughs> Trying to fucking hide his boner. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> why so he's wearing the baggy pants. <laughs> and of course, the whole time this is going on, Cammy's uh, watching all of this. What? <laughs> Cammy's watching all of this. <laughs> Cammy's watching it all. Which means that Bison's watching it all. And... <laughs> we cut back to, like... <laughs> He's like, oh shit, shit. Are they are they still fucking? 
Like, no, sir, they're not fucking. They're just talking in the kitchen. All right, let me know when they start fucking again. <laughs> yeah, see, see if you get a three-way go in there. Just insinuate it, you know what I mean? Like, use some of that, put some, like, shadow magic on them, you know? Like, uh... Have you did shadow law magic shit? Yeah, just <laughs> try and lock the door, being like, "Oh shit, I'm here to install the cable or whatever the fuck." Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're fucking under mind control. You don't know what you're doing. That's always the thing about yeah. Imbice. Imbice it just seems like a very like creepster, like rapester to like all these like dolls that he pretty much has. Well, the thing is, he's very much. I mean, he's not the only. Here's the thing about Bison. He's not. He doesn't only go after young women. But he, for some reason, it's young woman he gives the spandex outfits to to do all his fucking shit. Like, because, you know, Guile gets to dress the same, Ryu gets to dress the same, just going off the animated things and all that. But then once he's second, he gets, like, you know, a girl in her 20s, like, all right, all right, um, fucking throw her in the spandex thing. Yeah, I give her Sir, the- it's not really, it's not really tactically sensical. Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Shit, I'm in fucking charge of Shadow Law here. What the fuck? Fuck you. He does kind of have that super... I mean, Bison always looks like he has kind of that rapey face to him. Yeah, just like a guy who's just never been told no ever in his life. Well, he has that big, giant j- chin with that massive grin. The big so, old yeah. M-butt chin. M-butt chin, yeah. <laughs> so from there, we go back to Interpol, and that's where Chun-Li and Guy are talking again. They realize, what?! Ryu just left town again? Fuck! Yeah, they took a private so jet. Like, kid's like, yeah, I got a private jet. My dad gave it to me. You know, it's just like a little prize. You know, something small for like, you know, just just a just one of those like regional martial arts tournaments. Nothing big. <laughs> something down at the Y. <laughs> yeah, you know. I helped out some like youths for like a day. My dad gave me a jet. No biggie. Where are those kids now? Oh, oh, overdosed. Oh, but you know. I helped them. I helped them in their later, like you know, last few days they had. So whatever. <laughs> so they go back to Japan and then they go to visit pretty much, you know, Gokin's like grave, which not really too. I mean, obviously Ryu must have put that there before he left. Yeah, yeah, he probably did. Hey, you, no, he didn't have money for it, so he probably just had to like fucking <laughs> just, chisel away. At he that just stole thing. a grave in the middle of the night and drug it home. <laughs> Who's gonna stop him? Yeah. <laughs> fucking old old man McNilly or whatever. The fucking grave fucking gravekeeper there. The one Irish dude in in the this island in this this part of Japan. Just Sam blasted off the other guy's name on there and carved in Gokins. <laughs> Just hot oakened it from an angle. Yeah, exactly. Whoosh. Just took it right off. Well at the same time, M. Bison sends out Vega and he's like, Hey, you gotta go and track down Ryu and Ken. You do that. Or I guess Ryu, but technically Ken gets involved in the process here. <laughs> Yeah, so from then, and that's where we see, uh, that right there, that's where he says, like, oh, greatest, he sees a sign for greatest Japanese fighter of all, and that's where we see E. Honda. And from there, we see Sakura, and she, you see Sakura, she just loves kung fu, and she loves martial arts, and karate, and whatever. So she's like, oh, I want to be like E. Honda. Why? Oh, he's a fighter. Oh, well, he's like, I'm going to be, I'm going to eat a bunch of hot dogs, come big and fat, just like him. Like, all right, whatever, follow your dream, I guess. (laughs) And that's where... She, uh, Vega comes in, starts talking shit to E. Honda, and out of that they have this big fight. And this is just kind of a quick fight with E. Honda, but like I said before, if you if your favorite character doesn't get a moment to shine here, they'll get a moment to shine later in the series. Yeah, they always kind of come back around. I want to say this really quickly. Did Sakura actually do the hot dog eating contest in the Alpha movie? I think she was talking about it. She says, I'm going to eat hot dogs. And then, yeah, I think that's what she was talking about, doing the hot dog eating contest. But I don't think she ever did. Okay, well, because for some reason, in like, my head, like, I was, like when I was reading that part, I'm like, I-, I have this, like, vision of Sakura doing that. I'm like, I don't know where that came from. It was like, was it the movie? Was it, was it just a mention? I never saw I never saw Alpha Generations. Maybe she does it in that. It's I don't not think in that she one. does I that for sure, because I have that. I movie. don't think she does it in that one. I want to say, though, she does it because they they have this um, other series where it's called Street Fighter Legends, where you just take one random character and just focus on their story. And I want to say in Sakura's, like, it, it takes place between, um, I think, Arc 2 and Arc 3. And while Ryu is off doing whatever he's doing, it's this this side series focuses on Sakura. And it's from there, you get a bunch of characters from rival schools and all that. Uh-huh. And uh, 
I want to say she has a hot dog eating contest thing there. Maybe. Maybe it is. I, I just don't. I don't, there's, I don't remember remember reading that one though. So uh, is this... there's there's the blonde chick. I don't remember her name, but there's the blonde chick who does not like Sakura, who's her like arch enemy, and it's kind of that Goku Vegeta relationship where she hates Sakura, but Sakura's like whatever, let's fight. You know? Yeah, so. they're always just having a good time and so on. Or one of them's having a good time. <laughs> yeah. You know? The other's just angry, and she's like a little, like, rich bitch, you know? But anyway, um, I want to say in there they have a hot dog eating contest kind of thing. But out of that, what ends up happening is, you know, re, like, she witnesses Vega beat the shit out of Vega. Oh, no, no, she witnesses uh, Vega beat the shit out of Honda, and then sees Ryu's picture. It's like, I'm going to find this guy, because he said something about he's going to go find the world's toughest fighter. I'm going to see who this guy is. So... Moving forward from there, Vega encounters uh, encounters um, Ken and Eliza. Yeah, Ken and Eliza, and he's all like hell flirting on her, and then plants a bug right on a handkerchief she just bought. And before then, you have like Akuma sitting there at the gravestone. Ryu put it there, and he's just like, "Oh, you're dead as fuck," and take your necklace. <laughs> they just cut back over to like cut back over to fucking Ken and Re- Ken and Vega and Eliza and then from there uh Guile and Chun-Li on their way to Japan. Yeah, they're going there to meet up. Well, then it's got kind of that scene that's almost like out of Street Fighter 2 where Vega invades Chun-Li's room but instead it's Eliza's room and so on, which almost makes it much more threatening because at least Chun-Li's like, well, you know, she could, you know, she has a fighting chance. Not Eliza though against Vega. For a second, I thought they killed Eliza in this. For a split second, I thought they did. Like, oh, that was ballsy, but they don't do that. So, essentially, um, she's in the room. She's like, hey, I just bought some lingerie. I should hurry on over. Like, okay, cool. I just got to get some udon noodles that we used to get all the time back when I lived in Japan. So, he's like, whatever. You know, so then he's on the way, and that's when Vega shows up. He says, you're going to tell me where Ryu is, and you're going to tell me all you know all you know about him. And she holds... This, this part... Um, yeah, because this part is probably way more, like, intense right here than it was probably in the anime. Because she literally, he literally holds Eliza down, and he's just threatening to kill her right here, and that's when Ryu comes in, you get this cool, um, uh, did I say Ryu? I meant Ken. Yeah. You get this cool Ken-Vega battle. Yeah, no, it's a pretty badass one, and so on. He just, like, kicks the crap out of Vega, throws him out the window, and everything like that. Of course, as you see, watching on is Charlie. There's always somebody, like, creepily watching on on every single one of these here. There is a lot of people just kind of, like, cucking, you know? <laughs> just peeping in on these, like, you know what I mean? Like, Eliza's in there. What's, what do you think Charlie's been doing for, like, the last two hours? <laughs> well, Charlie is watching them and Vega, and then, like, Bison is watching Charlie. So it's like, it is kind of like as you always zoom out. There's somebody else watching them. I never really realized that until you pointed it out. But yeah. And it's always like a triple watch, too. It's like somebody's watching. And then through that guy's vision, M. Butchin is watching, too. <laughs> we don't see where his hand is either, so who knows. Uh, but I'll say this. Uh, this actually surprised me because, well, you know, uh, when Ken actually punches Vega so hard, it does the thing in the game where if you hit him hard enough and long enough... He loses his claw. Where this, the claw goes and slashes across her neck. It's like, oh shit, they just killed her? And then, like, well, now Ken's got... This just became, like, an old, like, 70s style kung fu movie, you know? And then from there, though, Vega, he just punches... Gets punched in the face, is bleeding. He's like, my beautiful, perfect face, whatever. You know, jumps out the window. You know, and then I really we like realize, to say oh, this, though. If, if they did kill Eliza right there, that would be such like a ballsy way to make this story go. Because I feel like that would give so much motivation for why Ken really has to like track everybody down. I mean, granted, I guess he would fall into like his like walk to the club of somebody you know dying, and uh, we're going out there to avenge them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I could see them kind of contemplating that right there, but because everybody because everybody is avenging somebody except Ken. Maybe that's the reason why he doesn't really seem to have as much in this in this arc or the story. I mean, he's always a big part. He's he's but Ken's always like a side character. He has some big moments, mm-hmm. but he's always a side character in this. This is very much. I mean, I'm gonna say like like I said, this first volume it seems like it's more Ryu in Guile's story, but at the end of the day, as, as the series goes on, it becomes more Ryu and Chun-Li's story. Yeah, exactly. But um, then, so, then you realize that Liza's not dead. She's just in the hospital, whatever. She got some stitches and so on. And then Guile and Chun-Li are like, I think they're like looking for Ryu, if I remember correctly, right? 
They're... They just got to Japan. They're super tired. They're going to start looking, and they're pulling into a hotel. And he's like, is there anything open? Like, oh, we got vending machines here, you know. Welcome so, to Japan. He's there's... like, great, ramen. Yeah. And then from there, they see Charlie. And Charlie goes and kicks the shit out of them. And he's called Agent Shadow here, which I want to say there was some kind of weird dark version of Charlie you fought, depending if, on if you played someone's character arc in the game. Well, I want to say in Alpha, there's the Dark Charlie. Mm-hmm, yeah. So they play, they fight against Dark Charlie. And then uh, it's one of those things where he sees his uh, dog tags that Guile has. Like, you gotta remember! You gotta remember! <laughs> just has, like, a montage cut through his head of, like, flying up high, like, just pulling on the stick. Like, pull harder! Fly to the sky! Fly like Icarus! <laughs> If the sun burns our wings, we'll both fall together. It's just playing the Iron Maiden song, The Flight of Icarus. Like, fly on your wings like an eagle. He's like, uh, Nash, I remember. But I'm not ready. And then he just gets out of it. just runs off. And that's where he has a, a bison drone hovering over him. Like, yeah, I'm watching. I'm still watching, yeah. Then he jumps up and attacks the uh, drone. He's then like Bison's still happy. Me. Well, like Bison, the worst thing could happen to Bison. He's happy about it. He's just like a challenge, you know. So out of that, he's just like, like what happened? Like in, let's see here. He's like curious. Very well. Shadow and those two other pests will have to honor of will have the honor of dying by my own hand. So he gets excited whenever something bad happens. Like I don't give a shit. It gives me a reason to get out of the house. <laughs> yeah, shit. I want to take a vacation to Japan again and get some me some udon noodles? I'll, it'd be funny if this company's called Udon. They just tried like <laughs> placing that in there all the time just to get you across. They just go to a restaurant and just udon noodle udon noodles all the time. Just has the same logo as this company, and um. <laughs> Then we just suddenly a cut to like Cammy, like oh I guess she got caught by Rose. Yeah, I was kind of like, wondering that too. It's like, like what happened there? Like, would you like fall asleep at the wrong hotel and it happened to be like oh Rose was here? She was next door. You know, no, it's one of those, she had one of those psychic like, houses this chick in was... England. Or it's one of those things like she was creeping on me. It's like what's this bitch doing? I'm like oh. Secret agent. All right, why well, not? I got the cure for this. <laughs> yeah, let me pull out. Which card do I have here to cure the secret agent one? Because <laughs> I don't think, because I'm looking, I don't know if we see, I'm trying to see if there's a, a moment where, I want to say what ends up happening is, uh, they say how she gets there in volume two, I think. Maybe that's what it but, is. Sh but right here, it just suddenly, oh yeah, Cammy. she's hanging out with a bunch of, can there's a bunch of candles all around her, and then Rose just like, oh, hey, what's up? I'm going to erase all this shit, give you your old memory back. All right, whatever. You're done. Get out. That's <laughs> kind of all it is. I love how I, I know it's later in the book, but like they, she like literally just drops her off like at a park bench in front of like the British embassy. Like, here you go. There's like a note like taped to her forehead. Be like, this is your new job. <laughs> all right, don't, don't worry. I did the paperwork for you. You're good to go. Just walk in. <laughs> You're going to have to pay the 550 fee though. So Yeah. You know, being a psychic, you don't make that much here in England. Yeah. Well, I'm even looking at the thing is, it's just kind of funny because you know there's something like we got to bring in this whole plot point with with Cammy. I, I got a feeling this part, this particular scene was like something they almost forgot about. I feel like they're moving along. And they're like, shit, we like, got one page. Fill it in. <laughs> yeah, I feel like what happened was like, oh well, we gotta. What what are we gonna do with Cammy later? Well, Cammy is later gonna get her memory back. It's gonna happen right here. It's gonna happen right there. Like, well, it's going to kind of conflict because volume two, like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, we don't leave room for that, did we? No. How many extra pages do we got? One? <laughs> fuck it. We'll get it done. Yeah, we'll, we'll find a place for it. Don't worry. And that's where you get a moment for Dan. That's where Sakura and her friend from Alpha go in to see, like, oh, he's the greatest fighter in Japan. And the, what I like whenever they put Dan into these things is he's very much of kind of like, as you know, Anime, I feel a lot of time is not self-aware. Dan is kind of the self-aware, like, 
anime characters are like, Father, I will avenge you! <laughs> well, everyone's just like, what? All right, he's doing that again. <laughs> yeah. Well, I always love Dan. Dan's such like a magical character. And I just love the idea of like Sakura goes here because she's just trying to find somebody who can train her like Ryu. It's like she's taking like, well, here's a guy who's close enough. He says he's on par. And then, you know, when he goes and he's got his whole story, like, well, I, I used to train with Ryu. And then they kicked me out one day because I tried to take revenge for my father. And then they're just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. He's like, well. Here's the thing, it's 5,000 yen to train here with the old Master Dan. Or if you could beat me in battle, it's free. And she just, like, punches him right in the stomach. Yeah, she just beats the fuck she, like, out here's of the word She just free, keeps on going. Just, like, you know what I mean? Like, almost like, she's like, free! Just fly and punch right at him. He's like, choke is one thing I never do. But I warn you, no one ever challenged the mighty fist of Dan hit big punch. <laughs> I thought, like, when he goes to throw a Hadouken, he's like, well, then take this! And it just kind of, like, grazes her, like... He's just like, huh? No, it just pops. It does the thing where it just pops before you had a chance to Oh, yeah, her. I guess that's true. And she just looks like... <laughs> just kick right across and the And then thing. she gets a few more swing... She gets a few more swings in, and then from there, they're going over to the... Uh, we're back to Guile and Chun-Li at the hospital. They bump into Eliza, and Eliza's like, you motherfucker, I saw you at the Chinese restaurant, but now you're here in Japan... What are you doing? You're not returning my sister's calls. You abandoned them. This and that. Fuck you. Some real kind of like, like you're uh, going after that Bravo guy again, reality you? TV shit. <laughs> what? It's all about Charlie, huh? You're gonna go run off with Charlie again. Jump in the cockpit with Charlie. I see how it is. <laughs> Listening to your fucking Kenny Loggins playlist you made together. <laughs> you know you have a son. It's like, well, it's not really my son. I just sort of took care of her. I just. Yeah, I, I did it. It was one. It's the <laughs> yeah, so I took care of her. <laughs> the son, daughter, it's one of them. I don't remember which one, but fuck it. Hey, you know what it is? It, it, it's the don't ask, don't tell period of the military. I had to have a woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> for the scent off the law dogs. You work for the law dogs. Like, shh, don't tell them. It's, it's, it's just like in Top Gun, you know what I mean? If Goose didn't have the woman, you know, if Maverick didn't have the woman, you know what I mean? Like, they could never have their relationship together. Just saying. They needed the women. That's what I needed. That's what Charlie needed. So we could have each other. And then from there, he just has this whole thing about, like... So aside from that, she's like, you know, what the fuck are you doing here? You know, he's like, I don't gotta explain myself to you. Fuck off. But where's your friend Ryu? Because people are looking for him. And then from there, while they're passing by... Well, actually, no. Oh, we don't get there just yet. Um, well, that, yeah, I have to say that, that part where, like, the Julia thing is, like, it makes, like, you know, Eliza connected the guile in some weird way. That, that That's kind of, like, a weird plot point, because I feel like that's a no other Street Fighter story thing. That's, like, I've, I only remember it from here. No, no, I think it's one of those things that was just, like, well, we got to connect them somehow. <laughs> so, making guile and ken sort of brothers-in-law i guess which is something i never really thought of you know? yeah well we live in san francisco everybody's related right that's how it works here <laughs> you know it's just just how it is so they go to gokin's they go to gokin's dojo rian and Ki, uh, ken and ryu they're looking around trying to figure it out and they get a call like oh, fuck what is it and that's where they get the lowdown of like you know okay people from interpol are looking for you like we're gonna meet up with them and then while Ken and, uh, while, uh, Guile and Chun-Li are leaving, that's when Sakura and her friend are bringing Dan into the hospital, and they overhear the conversation, like, wait, Ryu? Where's he at? Yeah, just let's... Shit, I gotta get the fuck over there. Let's just drop Dan off here. <laughs> I love how, like, the lady at the hospital's like, oh, hey, Dan, checking in again? Who beat you up this time? <laughs> just these two little girls, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it was only one of them. <laughs> But she packs quite a punch, I tell ya. <laughs> Not as strong as old Dan Abiki, though. Oh, you know, I was just letting her get the punches in. So then we move forward, and that's where uh, they're back at the they're back at the uh, dojo, and Sagat rolls in. Yeah. And they have this big battle. Ken and Ryu. I mean, Ken has this. I mean, sorry. Ryu has this big battle with Sagat, and I always like the relationship. It's that whole kind of like noble enemy thing. They're throwing a few punches, and it's just such like it's kind of like you look at them and you don't think they have this whole uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't look like polar opposite type characters. You don't think the karate guy voices the Muay Thai guy, but for whatever reason, I always just like that you know 
that that uh you know rivalry the two of them always had. It's nothing as on the nose as like Evil Ryu or Shadow the Hedgehog for Sonic or something like that. You know. No, I always I always think Sagat is the coolest kind of like villain for especially Ryu itself. You know, I just think he compliments him real well. You know, because M. Bison's a good, like, overall villain, you know? And Akuma, yeah, I get it, because he's kind of, like, the other... He's just the evil version of Ryu, in a sense, when you think about the end of the day. They got the same move sets for the most part, and so on. But Sagat, even though I guess he's got similar moves, too. But, at the end of the day, they just look really cool at each other. And just, whenever they're fighting, it's like, that's always really neat. I always kind of wish they brought that back around. It's like, that's there in Street Fighter 1, and it's just never there enough, I feel. I feel like you could always do so much more of that kind of story arc. I know he's meant to be uh, Ty and all that, but I whenever I look at the whenever I look at uh, Sagat, I can't help but think of The Rock. Yeah, that's totally like The Rock would play a perfect Sagat if you ever wanted to have him go on. He's massive, but yeah, I just well, anyway. Well, one so they thing throw you did forget though, there's there's that little like side story where it was like Charlie and Guile and Nom. <laughs> Were they in Nom? Yeah, it's like it's like the in between story that's right between. Uh, issues one and or whatever the issue we're on in the next one there's like that part there's a oh maybe this one i have this one i have doesn't have little in between stories oh maybe it, or, or yeah oh huh i thought that was in the big book you had i have it in the big book but this i have the smaller book i'm going off of right here the big book is kind of like the later volumes oh okay well I, I just saw that there was there was like literally like a charlie black ops section where he goes in and rescues guile or whatever and it's like they're pretty much just in vietnam and so on do they come across any random characters like, oh, hey, guy, what are you doing here? <laughs> Whatever, or just like, or like biking or some shit like that. No, it's literally like a POW. Well, Aiden, Aiden. It's like a POW camp and all of a sudden like Charlie just comes in there like throwing kicks and punches and everything and just destroying the whole place. Like they really had no idea what just hit him. <laughs> and then he, and as, as like the Viet Cong guys are running away, Charlie's grabbing like Guile off of like, he's tied up like Rambo is in number two. And then escaping out of there, and there's this ginormous explosion in this village. Just like fuck them, <laughs> America, suck it. <laughs> He'll always be my guardian angel. He always, he always healed my wings, taught me how to fly. <laughs> oh, but uh, but yeah. Then going back into it, we get to um, where you think there's gonna be this big ass like um, <clears throat> Sagat and Ryu fight, and what I like about it, just a couple of hits, and it's like. Just want to see how strong you were. But save it for the Street Fighter tournament coming up next year. That's where we'll really test it out. He's just like, oh, you you traveled all the way out here to tell me that? Well, yeah, well that and, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, M. Bison really wants you. He wants you as a robot. But uh, I said, no way. I ain't about fighting a robot. I want to fight a man who trains. Y yeah, and then he's like, oh, thanks, man. You bet. Bounce. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And that's where... <laughs> and that's where we cut back to like Chun Li and uh, we cut back to Chun Li and Guile, and from there they're just like, oh, we we finally found Charlie, and Charlie's like, I remember, oh, dude, that's so good, and then he says like, oh, well, that's what's not good is he killed your your father. What? Yeah, some chick named Cammy killed him. What? Yeah, I'm sorry, it fucking sucks. <laughs> Helicopter comes up behind him, unloads on him. She's like, no, Charlie, which I was like, like, okay, <laughs> they got that from the game. He's like, I just got you back. <laughs> and that's when Bison comes down. He's like, "All right, let's have a fight." So that's where Guile and Chun Li get have this fight with uh, Bison. And out of that, they're kind of getting their ass kicked for a little while. But with what little strength Charlie has left, he does that super somersault thing and basically cuts the uh, cliff in half. Yeah, it's really cool. It just like sends Bison off the edge, along with himself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, oh, okay, whatever. We all know he'll be back. Come on, let's not. <laughs> yeah, back. we know Charlie ain't going anywhere. And then Guy, I was like, I lost my man. I lost my bro. He's <laughs> like, I don't know how to live with myself. He's like, until the great sky eagle binds us together again. What? Nothing. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. You're in a man together with another man in the Air Force when it was only men. It's like, you're just rambling now. It's a ramble, or is it a life ode about Charlie? Always been a rambling man. <laughs> now you're just saying, just starts like slowly, like, like just quoting the Almond Brothers. <laughs> and then like we go back to Ryu Ken, they're like, it really just feels like they're like, oh, let's go visit the shrine. And it's like, well, we got time to kill, I guess, you know. 
haven't been here in a while. And they go out there to hang that's... out, and then next thing you know, Akuma shows up. And that's where Akuma shows up, and we get a little, like, quick flashback of Ryu training for a minute, then back to the Akuma fight, and he... He, like, you know, he has, Akuma has this whole thing like, you must lose all other attachments. You must just fight. You know, that whole thing. Like, that is the only point, you know. And they have the whole anime thing of like, I fight to protect the ones I love or whatever. That is but your weakness. Like that is fucking stupid. <laughs> you are a <laughs> fucking <laughs> fag. But I have a wife. You are a fag to me. Oh, jeez. Yes. To be the best fighter, you must have nothing but yourself. Be one with yourself. That is all you need. Ryu, I will see you at the tournament. Don't you dare fight Sagat. You have to fight me instead. Pretty much. That's kind of how this whole thing goes. He's like, I'm not here to fight you, Masters. I'm here to fight Ryu. And then, like, the whole thing fights. The two of them, like, try to take them on together, but they both get their asses kicked. And it's a very, um, long, drawn-out fight, but it's pretty cool, though, you know? Uh, the... Artwork in this scene's really great, the special with the usage of the After Effects and the lights and all. I'm not sure if you say After Effects, but the lighting effects and all they use for, like, the chi and the Hadoken kind of moves and all that. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of this fight, Ryu ends up having this flashback of, like, hey, remember that time you kind of lost your shit and attacked, like, the Master's janitor? <laughs> yeah. You know, old Bill, old Bill Osaka... He used to come by and, you know, work on the weekends for a little bit of extra cash. I, I said, hey, Bill, why don't you come in? Throw, teach him how to throw a good right hook. And then he just lost your shit, started pounding his face in. <laughs> and, you know, I, at first I thought it was funny. And then I realized it was serious. <laughs> then I saw your eyes going red and then you started speaking Latin backwards and all that shit. I'm like, oh, shit, exorcist. Let's get him off. Hey, 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 hey. That's like my brother. Wait a second, what's these connections here? <laughs> oh, and I forgot to mention, that's where, like, Sakura comes in, and she's like, Hey, guys! Like, what the fuck are you doing here? She literally here? comes like, at, like, the worst moment you could possibly show up and say, Hey, I, I, wanted to, I want you to train me. <laughs> and then he says, like, I'll even fight this guy here! Bitch slaps her, he just goes against the wall. <laughs> I love how he slaps her, and then Sakura flies right into her friend as well, too, so it's like a double, like, whammy. <laughs> Is okay, as we were, and like Ryu is just like, she's just a kid, like she came at me with full intent of a battle. <laughs> He's like, maybe you could learn something, Ryu. I think that's what he says. I think he says like you could learn something from her, I think. Something to that effect. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does, yeah, because yeah, he's talking Wait. about he's like, he's like, I like that how she just comes at me. She's fucking stupid, but hey. <laughs> stupid is a stupid does. That's what my mom always said. Before I hot oakened her. Yeah, because she was fucking stupid. And I was sick and tired of living at home. I was like, fuck you, mom. You don't got your soda here? It sucks. Leaving. I like the idea of, of Akuma just as a shitty 90s kid. <laughs> I know. Well, that's, that's almost like, he, he almost could be. Sometimes he feels like he's like borderline going that direction. Like, fucking hate it here. Everything sucks. Like, I wish it was dark and evil. And if there was nobody around, it'd be so much better. If I didn't have to deal with my family or these kids. Everybody could just... But you could just do, like, dark Hado shit like me. That'd be fucking cool. Yeah. You know, it'd be awesome. <laughs> Listen to the Misfits. <laughs> Rancid. Yeah, exactly. Like, just punch whoever I want with no care in the world. Be free loving. Free fighting. push-ups to Papa Roach. <laughs> yeah. I'll get those buckets of water on me and do, like, squats underneath the waterfall. Hell yeah. Because it is my last resort. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, they fight for a little bit they, longer. They, they fight for like an entire issue, practically. And that's where, you know, uh, Ryu loses to Akuma, and that's where he has a flashback. Like, hey, I'm sorry, I lost the shit, I lost my shit on Uncle Bill. Like, hey man, it's okay, just don't fucking do it again. <laughs> and uh, learn to keep your evil down, and you know, whatever. Let's go get some ramen, let's go get some udon. Let's go get some udon <laughs> from my favorite chain restaurant, Udon Comics. <laughs> <laughs> that's where they wake up that's where they wake up like oh man he kicked our ass but don't worry we'll find him and he's gonna be at the next Street Fighter tournament so we can find him there and that's where Eliza comes out and says like doctor said that we're actually pregnant so then that's where Ken's like hey man I can't go with <laughs> he's you like, he's like, got... remember how I said we were gonna go and like do the tournament together and I was gonna help you win and make sure it all went according to plan and so on 
Yeah, about that. Uh, fuck it, I ain't doing that. <laughs> what? Yeah, I got a kid coming, so, uh, nope. Not helping you out anymore. You go fuck yourself now, Ryu. Oh, jeez, Ken. That's... Well, whatever. I'll, get... <laughs> I'll just be practicing from my garage. Granted, it's like the size of a mansion, but still. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can only park. There's a, there, there's a, there, the garage in my house has a house within it, so it's, you know, could do worse. And then, like, all of a sudden, it's like Sakura shows up, like, perfect timing. Be like, oh, I'll, I'll go up you instead. He's like, hey, see, look, it's Celia. It all worked out. Hey, you know, here, here you go. She'll take my replacement. You know what I mean? It'll be like having, look, it'll be like having another kid, except for it's a little Japanese girl. There you go, Ryu. Who can't fight. <laughs> yeah, she wants to fight. <laughs> she could take a punch. Shit, you saw her could take a punch from Akuma. <laughs> so, then moving forward, that's where we have this, like, scene where just kind of, re like, Rick comes back to all the characters like all right here the, here's where the journey begins um Giles contemplating his family seeing how he's going to go back Chun Li is mourning her father uh Ken and Eliza trying to figure out what their next move is going to be as a couple and then Ken and uh, Ryu and um Sakura off to train and you know I guess there's you know they never come back around to like Hey, where'd our daughter go? Oh, he's went with some hobo just traveling the world. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, it's the hard one. Is the is Sakura's friend is the one who has to explain this now. <laughs> well, you know what? The dad's probably like, you know, last week it was a sailor, so this is probably she'll probably be back in three days when she runs out of money. <laughs> We're used to this. Yeah, you know, she finds some guy, some older gentleman. Runs off with him, says she's going to learn martial arts, wrestling, kung fu, fencing, some shit like that. You know what I mean? I, she's just a fad. She's one of those ones. Like, you, you know, teenage girls. You, they're, they're into... Remember when she said she was going to become, like, the best barista? Yeah, that was a weird phase one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she put, like, she gave it the old college try of three days and then gave up. So, uh, I'm pretty sure she'll be back. <laughs> and then when she comes back, like, three months later, they're just like, Fuck! Hey, hon, how you doing? That's great. You're back. I thought we actually lost her this time. I was actually, I was actually kind of happy for a minute. The house stayed nice and clean. There was no noise. There wasn't yelling. You know, it was the quiet that I really, I, I didn't realize how much I appreciated the quiet. <laughs> I've never really appreciated how much I liked not having a daughter. <laughs> I don't hear this fucking J-pop blaring upstairs all the time. Yeah. She doesn't just attach a punching bag to every single room and just go at it. You know? <laughs> Shit, she put a drum set in the living room of all goddamn places she could put one? <laughs> oh, God, I do not miss her drum face. <laughs> the worst part, too, you know, she said inspiration would always come at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> For a second, I thought someone was playing Rush's moving pictures. Like, no, no, it's not, it's not coordinated enough. <laughs> Sounds like someone gave a chimpanzee PCP and some drumsticks. <laughs> nope, that's my daughter. <laughs> yep. Uh, she tried out for band once. Yeah, that didn't go so well. I, I don't know what it's like. They gave her the cymbals and she still couldn't keep it on beat. I don't know what that was about, but uh, guess what? They said they, they, she could take the, the cymbals home. They must have thought she was special ed or something. But uh, that was the worst <laughs> thing the school ever did to us. I mean, fuck, couldn't they just give her the triangle? <laughs> Shit, anybody can play the triangle. You don't have to play it on beat. Just her just... <laughs> just playing that fucking thing. <laughs> but it was the other thing, dude. The thing is, I don't want to tell her to put the symbols down, because I feel like if she has an emotional breakdown, she just might throw those things at me, like they're fucking Raiden's hat from Out of Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not to cross brands here, but, you know. But, but, but I like how it's just like, yep, now Ryu's just like, oh, shit, I gotta take care of a kid now, in a sense. He's a dad now. He, he is. He's, he's like, he's too good of a guy. It's like, he's like, and he's like there's also, there's, there's, there's kind of an age gap. I mean, like, you know, when you get older, really, like, less than, ten, you know, like, eight years isn't that big of a deal. But, like, right now, at this point, it's like, no, 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 that's too fucking weird. Well, it's also one of those things, like, hi, new dad. Like, what? What? Like oh yeah, my my par my parents don't want to be be my don't want me no more. So you're a new dad. <laughs> it was gonna be E Honda, but uh, I chose you now. Yeah, once he comes out of his coma, maybe I'll go give him a try. 
<laughs> Boy, won't he be in for a surprise when he wakes up ten years from now. <laughs> Aside from the fact he's in a coma and he's going to be in it for ten years. Yeah, other than that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's the end of Street Fighter Volume 1 right there. That's the same part where Cammy wakes up on the bench, just, like, dropped off and, like, oh, I guess she's in Italy at the British Embassy. Well, whatever. England, Italy, whatever. It's, there's a British embassy. Same fucking thing. Just, just drop. What do you do with an English person when you don't? When like they kind of like you don't know what to do with them. You just drop them off at the embassy, like on the park bench. In a fucking what? In a in a, in a like a in a fucking like uh, wooden in a, in, a, in a fucking wooden basket or whatever. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> not wooden basket. A fucking what do you call it? like uh, a uh, woven stick woven basket? Or whatever. Yeah, just it just. Tape. You have no idea how hard it was to find that in the size of a 28-year-old woman. Yeah, and then just tape a note on her forehead so she knows what she has to do. <laughs> That's got to be the most confusing thing for Cammy. Cammy's just probably like, the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> I don't even remember if they say if her uh, life before that comes into play. I know there's like a little side issue that goes into the other girls, like... uh there's the one girl that's kind of like Cammy, but she's like the German girl. Junie or whatever. And yeah, and there's one where it's like, it's actually a really dark issue. It got darker than other ones where, I mean, it's a little, one of the little mini stories, but she just completed her training. She's still under my control. It's like, do you remember your first kiss? And as a flashback, like, no, I do not. Do you remember moving into your own apartment for the first time? No, I do not. Do you remember your, you know, just all these things? Like, do you... Do you remember where your home is? No, I do not. I'm like, all right, we're on our last, we're on the last uh, job right here, and then you see your old house, and then you see uh, her mother coming home, and she's like, "Oh my God, Judy!" She drops all the groceries, and she's so excited to see her. She's hugging her like, "Why aren't you saying anything?" She looks nervous, and then behind Junie, you see she's holding a gun, and it just cuts from outside. You just hear a bang. Oh yeah, just super dark and so on. Well, I mean, that's even kind of like in uh, the Street Fighter 2, the movie, like once like Cammy's out of her mind control, she's sitting there being interrogated by like Chun Li or whatnot, and she's like, "I don't remember. I don't remember anything." So clearly, she's waking up here and she's like, "Shit, I really don't remember what the fuck happened. Someone just put a trench coat on me and left me on this park bench in a bathing suit of all things." Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's one of those things where um I think the series actually gets better as it goes on. I haven't really got past I got past I mean once they defeated uh once they defeated Bison, I'm like, oh I guess it's over. And then Street Fighter Four actually officially came out. I'm like, oh okay, more of it. And um I haven't really not that I disliked it, I just fell behind. And uh yeah, everything I read up to uh from this point to spoilers when they go to the big street fighter tournament and they go against bison for what's well we'll, we'll, we'll get to there that's... eventually you know what i mean we'll see oh uh, yeah without, without without spoiling it that that's kind of like as far as it got and then i think the series just gets better as it goes on so well yeah, yeah and then there's all kinds of other like side stories and so on in this universe and there's you know the single issue or like the single character stories and then there's like a street fighter 2 section and they got all kinds of fun stuff that I would love to kind of go back and check out. Because really, I think I, the only ones I read was like the first three volumes. If that, that was it, maybe. Maybe some other kind of special ones here. And there. I want to say when I got the big like textbook size like volume thing, I think I gave you the other ones. I thought I did at least. I, you gave me like number two, I think. And that's the one I have. Because mm -hmm. I... Because I bought this one on Comixology, or I got the it was on Comixology mm -hmm. Unlimited actually, and it was actually kind mm -hmm. of amazing because like you know you're used to like the manga size of it and just having mm -hmm. it like on like a giant fucking like tablet and whatnot, just being like those panels just massive and looking so badass. It was like that's pretty slick looking on there, gotta say. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, like this is one of these books that like I just reread again. It's just like it's so perfect. It's literally like. I could not complain about anything in this comic. Like, it's so good the whole way through. Just one of those ones, like... And I think that's, like, why I've always loved Street Fighter so much. It's one of those kind of things that... As far as a fighting game goes, like, and it comes just to playing, Dead or Alive's always been my favorite. Maybe just because I, I can actually do good at Dead or Alive. Dead or Alive's one of those few games I feel like I can say... I can actually win it on online when I play it. Unlike mostly other games, like Street Fighter, that's just mostly, like, Shame Fest. But Street Fighter's always just had, to me, one of the coolest video game stories and characters of all time. And it sounds kind of weird coming from a fighting game, but I don't know what it is. It's always captured me, no matter what medium it comes out in. 
Well, the story's always been pretty simplistic, but it always just had such a cool roster of characters. Mm -hmm. So, and I think for that reason, it's one of those things where it's just stood around. I think it's kind of its cast of characters why it's here. And I think that's the reason why people were a little taken aback for a minute with Street Fighter 3, because they're trying to minus out old characters and put in new characters. So much so, they're making... They're attempting to make Alex the new main character, but still keeping Ryu and Ken there, so you can still call it Street Fighter. But then, like, even though Street Fighter 3 is one of my favorites, I mean, like, it for its for its engine. There's still characters in that game that I really like a lot, but it's, uh... The engine in that game, I think, is one of my favorite ones, and I kind of like that they're willing to take a chance on some other more oddball characters. But yeah, no, the, as far as the comic goes, though, I think this is, like one of the best video game adaptations of anything yeah re really at the end of the day like it's just so cool it's one of those ones like if you've never read any of these street fighter comps go out and check them out we'll put links in the description here so you can get a hold of like comiXology or kindle forms of them and get physical ones if you want that too but it's an amazing series anything that udon puts out it's really cool too it's like the dark stalkers ones i've only flipped through those but i would love to read those too they look so badass I got volume one of Street Fighter versus Darkstalkers. I haven't got a chance to read it yet, but looking forward to that one. I saw this also. This was kind of seemed like an interesting one. There's Street Fighter versus G.I. Joe. <laughs> yeah, all right. I mean, I feel like I know who's going to win that one. Well, they're probably going to be like any versus story where it's like they get together and at first they're like, fuck you, fuck you, man, I'll trust you and everything like that. And then they're like, oh, shit, there's an evil at work. You know, all of our enemies have joined together. We got to join forces now because that's like how all those versus comics kind of always are. Yeah, well, at the same time, though, it's like, I, I mean, I feel like they're trying to make Street Fighter kind of like another G.I. Joe when they first brought it to America. They're trying to, rather than embrace the anime-ness of it, there's the Vla the, the Jean-Claude Van Damme movie, which is kind of like a G.I. Joe movie, really. Yeah. And then there's the cartoon, which was very much like G.I. Joe. And they had the toys come out, which were more or less like, get the Street Fighter action figures that come with, like, a tank or a jet ski. Just, like, they shoot a missile. Like, because that's in the game. See, that just reminds me, that's totally when, like, a guy, like, in his 40s or 50s is, like, given, like, okay, you got the American rights to putting out toys in an animated show for this thing called Street Fighter. It's real popular with the kids. It's a fighting game. It's a what? It, it, it doesn't matter. Just here, here, that's what the characters are. That's what they are. Sell it. Just Put shit out there. Make kids buy stuff. That's what it's all about. And that's like where you could see somebody being like, um, hmm. Well, it kind of seems like G.I. Joe. That's, we did a good job with G.I. Joe. Let's try that. You know, you could totally tell yeah. that's what it is. So it's kind of funny. That's what they're choosing to do. They do Street Fighter versus G.I. Joe, which is, eh, whatever. I mean, I'll probably might check that one out. But I, I, I bet you, I bet you'd be interesting. Yeah, it's probably enjoyable. But yeah, anyway, uh, that's I actually got to get going here. But yeah, when you can, check out Street Fighter Round 1 Fight. Really awesome book. Yeah, amazing stuff. And then uh, in a week or so, we'll come back and we'll do Volume 2 or something. Because how, many, volu I'm up for how many volumes are in this this main series before it starts splitting off the other stuff? Is it two or three? I want to say th like four. Okay, four. Four or five. Oh, geez, I didn't realize there was that many of them. I think it's four of them, I think, okay. give or take. Well, cool. Well, I look forward to kind of doing this because this was real fun to go back to this series and do a little retrospect on it. But till then, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, comics, music, all kinds of good stuff. Grab yourself a copy of Pizza Boys. Pizza Boys up on Comic Central, Comixology, and Amazon. And then till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we'll see you some other time. Later, folks. Thanks again for listening to the Old Man Orange Podcast. Sure, check out oldmanorange.com for more podcasts, cartoons, music, animation, and a whole lot more. We also have the Old Man Orange blog going with all kinds of fun stuff. If you easily want to support the show, use one of our Amazon links either on the website or in the description of the podcast below. Rate, review, and subscribe to the show either on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Newgrounds, or anywhere else that you seem to get this podcast from. Grab the sitcom-styled comic book Pizza Boys on either Comic Central, Comixology, or Amazon. Want more podcasts? Check out the Indie Comics Club over at Comic Central. I also got a workout website called Thor's Hidden Gym. Filled with fitness tips and tricks, videos, and a whole lot more fun stuff in the calisthenics world. Talk to us on Twitter, at Spencer S. Holmes and Dunnigan Ryan. Like our Facebook pages of Old Man Orange Productions and Pizza Boys Comic. Thanks again, we're out of here.